from our founder, Dr. Theodore M. on the series, The Life of David. David would not allow himself to be disdained for a single moment. He kept right on going because he knew his God. Do you know your God? This is Back to the Bible, and you've just heard a snippet of today's message from our founder, the late Dr. Theodore Epp. All this week, we're celebrating the rich 75-year history of Back to the Bible by opening up the vault of prior year programs. Today's comes from Dr. Epp's series, The Life of David. Now, Dr. Epp tells us just what made King David a man after God's own heart. What made David the man after the heart of God and what made it possible that he could have such victories? Just what were some of the things behind the scene? I think we can see many of them in the 17th chapter. They're basic and you'll find many lessons from them as we study them. And then his Psalms tell us so many, many things. David had been a man who had walked secretly with God. He himself mentions that when he was taking care of the sheep of his father, if the lion came or the bear came, that God gave him the victory over them. There he practiced in secret that which we saw later. This is basic for being a man like David. You too can be one like that. The promises that God has given David are tremendous because he dared to venture alone with God. In one of the Psalms it is written thus, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, so that if in secret you are right with God and walk with God, you will find that when you come out in the open, that then you can have the victory. So the real victory was won because there was an inner dwelling in secret with God. In another one of the Psalms, David writes, in this one, Psalm 27, 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. So that was the background of all of this. David knew from this secret meeting with God that there were weapons that were not carnal but spiritual, weapons that were much greater than the weapons of man. He knew what it meant, as we have it recorded for us in Second Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. Our warfare is not of the flesh, but spiritual. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Nothing can stop a man who will dare to walk in secret and strengthen himself in the Lord in this manner. To the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our spiritual warfare calls for spiritual weapons, friends. All you need to do is turn to the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, where this is clearly set forth for us, where he definitely says that our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. There you see what David did. Let the foe be met and conquered in private, and there will be no defeat in public. Too many people are simply fighting against other men rather than at the real enemy who is behind the scene. David went out in the name of the Lord. We'll notice in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, verses 38 and 39 now, that when finally David said, He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine, and Saul said unto him, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Then it tells us that Saul armed David with his armor and put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded on his sword upon his armor. And then he essayed to go, that is, he refused to go in this manner, for he had not proved it. This was a man-made armor, and he had never tried that. He'd never proven that. Now this doesn't mean that God couldn't use that kind of armor. But David was only going to use that which he had proven with God. He'd been alone with God many times. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them away. 
So David was reluctant to go in this type of armor. In other words, what are men, man-made weapons against the real enemy anyway? They will not do any good. We can use weapon methods, of course, and God uses all kinds of means, but they must be the means that God supplies. In this case, God supplied five smooth stones. He only needed one, but God supplied them. I'm not trying to say that you can't use other weapons. The thing I'm trying to say is, if we're merely trying to use other weapons, as Saul, and by the way, Saul was a coward. He couldn't, wouldn't go forward in the kind of weapons that he knew best. David said, I'm going in the name of the Lord. The real battle, you see, was Goliath, who's a type of, of Satan. And the God-believing man, on the other hand, in Israel. There's where your real battle was. And the real battle today is really the Lord's against Satan. You'll find this as you read the Scriptures. For we find in 1 Peter 5, 8, that Satan's going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That he says, but whom resist steadfast in the faith? Through faith resist him. It's the only way you can resist him. Put on the whole armor of God and be able to stand in those days. So then, he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, uh, in, uh, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The thing I want you to notice now, he took his staff in his hand, he chose him five smooth stones, and then he drew near to the Philistines. Faith ventures forth. We've talked about this so many times. But when our faith is in the Almighty God, his methods or his equipment are definitely secondary. The moment we believe God, the victories have already been won. We read previously that Israel fled from the giant. We noticed in verse 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, for they were sore afraid. But David faced the enemy. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. There's nothing can stop us when we have our faith in the right person, not in things or not in ourselves. But in 1 John 4, 4, I read, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, you'll find that David was first of all taunted by his brother when he dared to venture forth in faith. And this is so typical of what we see so often today. So often today, it's the brethren in faith who will be the one who may taunt us and say, you can't do it that way. Secondly, we find that Saul discouraged him. And just like it is today, very often it's the bigwigs of power who will go forth and discourage someone who will dare venture forth in simple faith. Now, finally, he faces the scorn of Goliath himself. And the devil's crowd go against him. We see now the boasting of this man, this Philistine. For I read, And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I will give thy flesh unto the fowl of the air and unto the beast of the field. Here you have the boasting of the enemy. Well, this should be almost enough to discourage David. Everything against him. And now you see the boast of this enemy. Satan's always boasting of great things. And he'll continue to do so, and he'll use any means that he can. For in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, we read about him boasting. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. That's some of the boasting of the old devil himself. And, of course, he's teaching others to do exactly the same thing. For in Revelation 12, verses 12 and 13, we see him once more. But this time it is too late. For it says, They overcame him, that is, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And so God has always given us a means and a way to overcome the tremendous enemy. 
The devil has arrayed himself against the church and against the Christian, but really it is against Christ. And when he is arrayed against Christ, he meets the victor. And just remember that you and I are in Christ Jesus. David would not allow himself to be disdained for a simple moment. Not for one single moment. He kept right on going because he knew his God. Do you know your God? That's one reason we're studying this. This same God of David is your God. You may know him if you will know him first in secret. Then in public life, you will see the demonstration of what God can do through you. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow as we listen to Theodore Epps' message. God bless you.